Hey guys, it's Core Ross and welcome to Six News. So I think it's the right time now to do a review of Rainbow Six Siege Year 7. And we'll start from Season 1, which was Demon Vale. This brought in a brand new operator called Azami. And I gotta just say, standout operator, probably one of the best in Rainbow Six Siege's history because she just transformed gameplay and it meant that every map, every objective could now be different because of her ability to put up these little circular walls. And still to this day, I see her getting played regularly and with every single player that I see, they have different tactics for using her gadget. And for some reason, she did not become overpowered. That's the most amazing thing for me. So very impressed with Azami. She was just the top. And this is the thing. Year 7 started off incredibly well with this new operator. But Demon Veil vale also brought us in some new features. So we got a deathmatch playlist. This is not something I personally play, but I do see the advantage of having it in the game as an alternative playlist that people can jump into. But there was another feature added in with this season that I use all the time, and that is Attacker Repick. And although this is one of the simplest ideas, and I would have assumed that it would maybe be like a, a bad balancing decision, it has just been so nice. And the comfort increase with this was brilliant. And talking about player comfort, there was another change that I thought was superb and I still love to this day, and that is the universal weapon sites. So your operators now had access to all the sites within their magnification range, and that meant that you could run whatever you wanted and just made it so much nicer. And again, that is still a feature that to this day I am absolutely loving. And then we also got a rework to Goyu, and I just don't feel like this worked. To me, it just didn't quite get him where he should be. It did help, like he was originally getting picked just for the deployable shields and the canisters were just uh, a bonus on top of that rather than being the actual main gadget. But the rework, just I don't think it worked overall for me for that season. But that was season one and its main features. We then moved on to the first event of this year, uh, if you don't count the SI stuff was called Rengoku. Now, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but it was a deathmatch mode. You still used guns, but you also had knives, which had different abilities, and it tied in quite well with the new operator. And overall, it, it felt like quite a nice package for the season. And although I'm not quite into my deathmatches, it was definitely playable and quite a lot of fun. And then moving on from that, we move into the second season, which was Operation Vector Glare. And Operation did return to the titles with this season and that would presumably be with the leadership change which happened at the beginning of the year. So we now had operations back and this brought in a brand new operator called Sens and they were underwhelming. It's a real pity because the gadget and bringing in a new weapon there's a lot of potential there especially this gadget which is basically just a big line of smoke grenades should have done really well. It should have been a, a pretty decent gadget for Siege. It takes away a lot of intel, but it didn't work out. It just hasn't worked out. It's unfortunate. I think this operator could have been one of the best of the year and even come close to like Azami. But unfortunately, it, you know, the, the gadget didn't work. The new weapon was just far too weak and the operator in total just ended up being a big flop, I think. And really unfortunate. I think there was a lot of potential for a really good operator. And it was just kind of squandered on the gadget and an overly weak weapon. But we got on top of that some other features. So we got a new deathmatch map. So this is, I think, good to have a dedicated map in this area. I don't know if it's actually a good map. You also let me know in the comments below. But it was good to get that. We also got the shooting range, which was brilliant. And I love that that is in. Now, I don't use it much, but that is because I want to just jump in every so often to check stuff and having a shooting range for that is superb. So very happy to have that feature as well. But that was it for main features. I would say that season two was very, very weak. We then went on to have Mute Protocol V2 as the event, but it was just gun game. What I assume happened behind the scenes, and this is obviously purely a guess, but I'm assuming what happened is they wanted to bring Mute Protocol V2 in and fix all the exploits and have a, a you know a really good event but i think they ended up not being able to fix it and had to just jump to a backup which was to use an arcade playlist that they'd probably already built which was gun game throw it into the old mute pro called map and that was kind of it so it really was unfortunately 
not enjoyable for myself. And that was also two events in a row where they were basically deathmatch. And that sucked. The gameplay variety in the first couple of seasons was just really thin. So that takes us straight in to Operation Brutal Swarm. Again, we got another weak up air. And again, I think the gadget was more than capable of being absolutely excellent. Whether it had maybe been switched to being a proximity based gadget that went off when a defender walked past it or something else, it just wasn't good. Like literally, I think if you were just to put real bees in the ball, it'd be better than the version you've currently got. And the most amazing thing for me here is that Grim is a three speed operator. Like, he should be really good. He has a great loadout. He's got great options. He should be good. Even with a weak gadget, he should still be a very good operator. But amazingly, he's just not. And it's sad because I think there's a lot of potential with Grim to be extraordinarily fun. And I do wonder, maybe it's kind of like the lion thing where, yeah, if you have a ping and operator that pings locations in real time, maybe, unfortunately, uh, the developers are going to be played, you know, play it safe and not have another line again. Um, but yeah, just a real missed opportunity with Grim, and that was two operators in a row that were very, very weak. But talking of weak, this season also had very minimal features, with a lot of its content being delayed into the next season. So we did get brand new secondary gadget for attackers, which was the EMP impact grenade. This, to me, has been a game changer. I don't use it much, but I've seen a lot of people use it successfully, and it also made different operator combos possible that I have seen people take advantage of and have a lot of fun with. So this has definitely been a very good addition, and I wouldn't say it's overpowered or anything, it's just been a great addition to the game. And then we also had a rework of the weapon recoil on PC, with the console recoil being disconnected from any changes on PC, resulting in a very odd thing where the LMG meta was very strong on both platforms, and then this rework to recoil came in for PC, completely killed off the LMG meta, but then on console that meta continued. And this was very unusual for me because I was playing at this point on console and PC, and predominantly on PC. So when I'd go and play on console, it was like playing a different game because the actual kind of strategies were very different with this LMG meta going on. Whereas it had actually been killed off on the PC side. And then we also got a brand new map. Well, an old map, Stadium 2021. This was to replace the new map that was supposed to come with season three, but had been delayed. And this was a pretty obvious desperation move here. They had almost no features for this season. They didn't have much content at all. They needed something. So very much from an outsider's perspective, it looks like they went, oh crap, we need something. Uh, we have this, we made it before. It's relatively good and relatively balanced. Let's bring that back in as a permanent map. And, and I could see them like quietly taking it out sometime in year eight. But although I love this map, it really just hasn't quite fitted in with the other maps in the rank pool, I think. So it's a bit unfortunate overall. And like I say, I think it was desperation. And then the event for this season was Doctor's Curse. And I can't say anything bad about this event. It is just so much fun every single time. And I have literally no complaints. I would love some new events with new gameplay. But Doctor's Curse is iconic. And it is very different from Siege's normal gameplay. Which makes it, to me, one of the best events. So I was very, very happy to have it back. And that brings us to the final season of Year 7. And that is Operation Solar Raid. With the new up here, Solus. And I think she is absolutely fabulous. Like one of the best operators this year. I don't know if she's as overpowered as some people make her out to be, but I do think she's fun. Like just pure enjoyment to run around with and a bit more interest than other operators. Now she is probably just a reuse of an IQ rework, but I have no issue with that. I think she fits beautifully in on the defender side. And yeah, I'm like, like I say, simple operator, but executed beautifully we also got a brand new map called night haven's labs now i was originally very excited about this because the teasers made it look like quite a small map and then when we actually got to play it it was huge and i love the older style of small maps that aren't probably relatively balanced but i enjoyed like the old hereford base and stuff like that that were tiny in comparison to siege's current day maps but overall i do think this is a good map and has a lot of potential for it i'm starting to actually make up strategies that are actually okay rather than just aimlessly running around on the map 
And of course, actually getting a new map was high on the list of people with priorities because we just haven't had many in so long. Then we also got some major features, cross-play and cross-progression, things that basically I think will change Siege forever. And although they're simple, it is nice to finally have them. And I'm sure on the back end, it's a pain in the ass to get them set up. We also have the reputation score in its beta form, very buggy right now, but I'll say it's nice to at least see it. And then we've got rank 2.0. And although I'm enjoying the new system, I have definitely noticed that I think because the player base is shrinking, even with crossplay on console, there just isn't enough players to really make balanced games. And although my season started with a lot of balanced games, probably because the player base, you know, was checking out the new season and jumping in rank 2.0, after that, it's just become really, really unbalanced. And I don't know if it's going to work out in the smaller player base that Siege now has. And then we also got a brand new battle pass system. And unfortunately, after using it for a while, it's just not good. Even with the time to get used to it, it seems like a bit of a chore to go around unlocking stuff. And although it's nice to be able to go straight to something I want and then equip that, it also launched buggy, not giving people tokens. The whole system was just basically knackered from the start and it is not good to use the system either i much prefer the old linear one i was hoping this might be interesting and it just is not but we did get one last comfort update and that was the ability for your team choice of colors also to represent the gadget colors this is something that had been in the works for a long time we knew it was coming and now that it's finally here i love it now i don't have to worry about shooting something that I think is a bad guy gadget, I can immediately tell that straight away just from the colors. So that is awesome. And then the event for season four was the return of Snow Brawl. And unfortunately, this is just an event I don't enjoy. I feel like every single game of it is two to three times longer than it needs to be, and it just turns into deathmatch. And considering we got deathmatches for the first two events of this year, this one just feels quite boring, unfortunately. And although this season will most likely include a Road to SI event as well, it just doesn't feel like uh, it's been a good season for overall gameplay. And that now leads us into the conclusion. Now, obviously, I've not talked about mid-season balancing and things like that. There's a lot I've kind of skipped by, but I've tried to talk about all the major stuff. Uh, otherwise, we'll be here for freaking day talking about everything. So my conclusion is that overall, this was a very weak year for Rainbow Six Siege. And I don't know if that's a cutback on like budgeting or whatever, or maybe they're trying to work on stuff that will come in future years. But year seven certainly did bring in some new foundation features that I'm going to be enjoying for many years to come, like cross-play, cross-progression, and team colors, things like that. Things that I just really, really love and make my experience in the game so much better than it previously was. And obviously I'll be enjoying those features for many years to come. So that was good. But the content, the gameplay really lacked this year. Looking back at previous years where I would say we had the golden age of two events per season. People obviously want like two operators per season. But I'm more into the events per season. And man, it was just so nice to have two events per season like in year six. So year seven for me having mostly reused events. Although I can't really say that about Mute Protocol because it, it was just gun game. It was, it was a different event. It wasn't really Mute Protocol, so it wasn't really a reuse. But the whole year just felt like a recycle when it came to gameplay. And of course, this being a game, the gameplay is important. And dropping down to one event per season was a real turnoff for me. Now, the features, I gotta say, this actual year was pretty impressive with features. But it was too issue heavy as well because season four launched with server problems where they went down every 24 hours and the issue has gotten slightly better but they're still going down and there's still major problems going into the winter holidays and this is the worst time for that kind of stuff to happen because of course people are off enjoying christmas with family right now so really unfortunate that wasn't also the only thing that happened the battle pass was broken on launch and that took them a little while to fix so overall the experience for season four i think has just been one of the worst even though the operator is great even though the map is okay the actual content and the issues has been far worse than usual and i am a person who expects big bugs on launch day with rainbow six siege i think that's an inevitability but unfortunately 
this was just way worse than usual and yeah really really bad and it also just puts into question whether this game can continue on into the future and add all these nice new features like cross progression cross play stuff that changes the foundation and whether the game can actually stay intact going on into the long term but yeah basically year seven is i think siege in its worst place in probably quite a few years even though it has changed some of the foundation parts for the better the overall experience hasn't really improved enough to overcome the issues that the game has and unfortunately i see that probably persisting into year eight it's all going to come down to actual gameplay content from here on i'm hoping maybe they do still have a big budget and they're just working on like i don't know story-based events for year eight or something like that but then don't get me started on the story because the story in this game is horrendously bad it is seriously terrible the narrative shift all the time with what seems to be the leadership changes behind the scenes so you end up with like night haven being set up as this potential bad guy and then it turns out they're not the bad guy and they just end up looking like idiots and you start the year off with this really cool cinematic that's military-based counter-terrorism and it's like oh that's really cool but then that doesn't lead into anything for the rest of the year and yeah just overall the story is bad 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 and yeah really unfortunate that that has also been a big downside to siege as well so yeah great feature additions this year some great foundation stuff and it could well be that the features added this year will pay off in dividends in future years but gameplay terrible so i'd love to know what you guys think about year seven of rainbow six siege in the comments below and i'll catch you next time